Yo, welcome back to a brand new video here on the second channel. And yes, we are once again going to be taking a look at some more post rotation uh, decks because in uh, this new block of post rotation decks that we got here, we actually get to see what control might look like in the new format. Now, I know I've been posting a lot of post rotation deck videos, but honestly, I think it's cool to kind of look into the future, see what Japan is doing. And uh, once again, I will leave a link down below to the website if y'all want to go take a look at these lists yourselves. Uh, we got a lot of interesting lists here to look at. Um, these are apparently decks that, uh, got top eight and either won a city league or won a gym battle. So that's apparently what some of these decks are. Again, there is a control deck featured in the, uh, decks here. And I know a lot of people might be curious to see how control is going to evolve and adapt after rotation because control does take a pretty big hit. It loses quite a few good cards. Mill tank becomes a lot worse. Uh, wash energy rotates. There's actually a lot of big cards that control loses. So it's kind of cool to see how control might try to adapt in the post rotation format. And uh, we get to take a look at that here. Um, if y'all once again enjoy the post rotation content, make sure to leave a like in the video and let me know down in the comments below what you think of some of these lists and if you're enjoying the post roll content. Because I know I've been posting a lot of post rotation videos, like a lot. Um, but you know what? It's it's good content to make and I think it's very informative. So let's take a look here. The first one we got is the Oinkalon deck. Uh, this deck's been getting a lot of hype. We've looked at a couple lists already. Uh, the concept is you're basically just trying to tank with this Pokemon. It does more damage for like each Pokemon on your bench. Um, it does play, um, you know, V-Guard Energy, Cheryl, Charon's Care. You're basically just like a super bulky defensive deck which is literally the concept of the deck, um, is you're just trying to be very tanky, very defensive, and you're just trying to have a lot of HP. I mean, you got full face guard, you have um, the V-Guard energy, which means you take, like, minus 50 damage. So you have, like, 310 HP in your stage 1 Pokemon, and um, it actually, I would assume this deck just has a really good matchup against Lost Box, unless you're playing against a Lost Box deck that has, like, a really big attacker. For the most part, you kind of just beat Lost Box um, because you're just super bulky. Uh, but next up is the first Arc Dura list. This is maybe the first Arc Dura list we've even seen in post-rotation here from Japan. And a lot of people are thinking about how Arc Dura gets to evolve after rotation because it does lose Hyper Potion, which is a huge loss, to be honest. Hyper Potion is a pretty big loss. It's one of the things that made Arc Dura good is, like, sometimes you just win the game because you got a Hyper Potion off and your opponent, you know, it messes up the math of a KO. Um, but Arc Dura... Basically, it's just kind of a very, I guess, like, aggressive deck. As you see, it plays three Pokemon Catcher uh, and an Echoing Horn and two Boss. So you're basically just trying to, like, gust stuff up. It looks like this list also doesn't play uh, Mustard anymore. And the thing with Duraludon, Duraludon should auto-win Lugia. So Lugia's still really good. We actually just did a video looking at how Lugia is evolving in the post-row format and why it's still a good deck. And if you run into a Lugia deck, I'm pretty sure you just immediately win the game with Arc Dura. Um, which is cool. The only downside about this Arc Dura list, there's no healing in it. There's no Crystal Cave at the very least. So, like, you probably have a... I mean, I guess you can still make Lost Box play, like, a... Make him play the, 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 what, the, the seven prize card game. But overall, or the eight prize card game, whatever you want to call it. But overall, definitely, um, I feel like the deck still needs healing, to say the least. But, again, Arc Dura, the reason you'd want to play it is because it just, like, literally auto-wins Lugia. Unless they have, like, a... A shred card in the deck but most lists don't play the single strike v max they're just kind of playing tyranitar and stone journer so you literally just auto win lugia which is pretty funny um you're also just very bulky um and i guess like you probably auto win oink too i mean i guess they have the path though but yeah i mean you do play four tower you can probably still out resource them regardless you also shred through them so you're basically forcing them to constantly heal every turn and find path um, so it probably just boasts a good matchup against, like, Lugia and this. I don't know about the Lost Box matchup, though. There's just no healing in the deck, which makes Lost Box tough. Then we got an Arceus Galley deck. It basically just is the new age of Arc Intel. Um, actually, that's basically three tank decks in a row. Yeah, this is basically just the new age of Arc Intel is Arc Galley. The idea behind the deck is you use Galley's ability to get a supporter card out of your deck. Um, you have Arceus, Drapion. Yeah, it's basically just Arc, it's basically just Arc Intellion 2.0. Um, it's not as, I guess efficient because like you you're using a stage two pokemon instead of drizzle um and you're a little bit of a slower pace deck compared to arc intel which arc intel because like keep calling you you don't have to set up rolls manually um so it's technically slower but hey man the deck's still pretty good um 
I think that it has probably good matchups across the board. As long as your Arceus doesn't get KO'd in one hit, I mean, you do play, you know, V-Guard and the Gardevoir to kind of sponge hits. And then we, of course, have Arc Flying Pika. Once again, just a very straightforward build here. Just literally Arc Pika with Bibarel. Basically going back to the basics of how the deck used to be um, before... Uh, Lost Box got popular. The only downside to Flying Pikachu is, yeah, it doesn't have Paracel anymore, and this list doesn't play Espeon, so you do still probably get farmed by Sableye. Um, so Lost Box can still be a tough matchup. I don't even know if Bibarel's worth playing anymore because of Sableye, which is yeah, just so stupid. Um, this deck does play two Avery. Avery seems really good in the format going in forward because you can get rid of um, Comfies and stuff, and Lost Box will fill their bench up, and Avery does punish them for that, and it's just good against other decks too, like Gardevoir, where they're trying to set up multiple Curlia. Um, so definitely a really strong card in this deck is the Avery, and then of course you got the Judge. Very, like, very disruption-heavy deck. I mean, you got two Serena, two Boss, two Judge, two Avery, two Research. Um, interesting. And then of course, the big meme deck. I don't know if this is actually any good. Probably not. It's actually the Kyogre Groudon deck here. Um, obviously this deck is probably a meme. Um, I mean, yeah, you have... Groudon, which can KO stuff in one hit, and then you have Kyogre, but I still think this is probably just a bad deck. I don't know if this deck won a tournament or something. I mean, I guess it did, um, but yeah, I don't know, man. That That's just, uh, see, I don't know about that, man. I don't know about that. <laughs> um, then, of course, we got another uh, Zork deck here. Again, Zork's interesting, and I think it actually did well in a big tournament, but lost because the Mew deck had that new healing item card, so... But yeah, this is our deck just playing the Radiant Alakazam. It does play three V-Guard, so trying to be a little bit more defensive, uh, which makes sense because Zoark does have only 270, technically 260 HP, because you're trying to, you know, get damage on it with damage pumps. So the V-Guard, I guess, makes sense. I don't know if it fixes too much math, um, but it is still a very fast, hard-hitting deck. So definitely seems like a pretty decent deck. And then we got another Arc Galley deck. Once again, the whole concept of this deck is you're basically just trying to be a very tanky and defensive deck here. We do see the Charon's Cares, the Path. Um, it's basically just Arc Intel Part 2, except you have Gallade as an attacker. Funny enough, it does play Gardevoir, but it's actually the Radiant Gardevoir. So definitely a really cool deck. I'm, I'm curious to see how Gallade works going forward. I think Gallade could have some potential. Like this, this um, currently a Gallade engine is worse than the Italian engine, but still, like, decent. I mean, being able to draw two cards is good, and then, of course, having access to Gallade is really good, too. So, definitely seems like a really interesting archetype. So, I'm kind of interested to kind of explore the idea of an Arc Gallade deck. And maybe if it's, maybe if it's even good right now in our current format. We just don't know. Um, and then we got the Arceus... Uh, just literally an Arceus deck, just Arceus Bibarel. There's nothing else. No Pikachu, no Drapion, no Gallade, uh, no, not even a Gardevoir, just literally just like straight Arceus. Um, I, I guess it's trying to be consistent. It's again a bit of a defensive build. You do have V-Guard plus Lake Acuity, uh, but interestingly enough, there is no Raiding Gardevoir, which I feel like you should still probably run in the deck. Um, you could probably cut like a Caption Aroma or something and play like an extra Raiding Gardevoir. Um, but yeah, it's basically just a bulky Arceus deck, two Charon's Cares, V-Guard, Lake Acuity, eight water. Um, we got another Arc deck. Now, this one really fascinates me. It's actually Arceus Zapdos. So Zapdos obviously has the attack that does knock out opposing Arceuses. So if you're playing against an Arceus Mirror, you have that option with Zapdos. Um, you do have the Galarian Zapdos, like the baby one. I'm not too sure about that. I don't know how good Galarian Zapdos is in this deck. I don't, I get like you want to paralyze your opponent, but I don't know if it's that good. I mean, I guess you have like Clara, but you have to discard the energy. So I'm not too sure about the Galarian Zapdos in this deck. I don't know about that one, but definitely a really cool deck nonetheless. I do like the idea of Galarian Zapdos. Arceus is still good. I mean, we've already seen quite a few Arceus decks already. I mean, one, two, you know, Zork again is a Pokemon Zapdos can beat, um, you know, three, four five, you know, a lot of Arceus, a lot of Arceus, I'm trying to beat the Arceus decks, and then we got a Shadow Rider um, deck here, really interesting list, so the first thing you might notice is the deck actually plays a Mew V, which is something I don't think I've ever seen before, but it's kind of like a hit and run, I think the strategy behind Mew is you use Psychic Leap, you knock out Comfy, and you go into Klefki, that is actually like Loki really, really genius, um, that actually kind of excites me. Yeah, yeah, Mew, being able to Mew into a Klefki is kind of cool. You, like, Underworld Door to the Mew twice, and then you go into Klefki. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Knockout, Knockout Comfy, go into Klefki. That is actually kind of genius. The thing I like about this deck is it does use the Espeon VMAX, which any deck that gets to use Espeon, in my opinion, is good, because Espeon VMAX is very, very good against Sableye, which just is going to be insane in the form, in the rotation format. Um, in my opinion, Sableye is still very deadly. But yeah, really, really unique deck. This is very, very, try, very much tries to hard counter 
um, Lost Box with that Mew uh, Klefki combo. Because you also play Roxanne and Three Judge. So you're basically trying to disrupt your opponent's hand while you're doing, you know, Klefki Mew. That is actually like low key really genius. I, I really like that idea. Mew Klefki. Like, who would have thought Mew V was going to be the main attacker in a deck? Like, this actually is kind of cool. Like, Mew Klefki against Lost Box sounds like it actually isn't even that bad. Um, next up, we have Dialga Magnezone. Uh, we've already looked at one of these decks, I think. Um, again, just plays 22 energy with 4 Adamant, trying to really capitalize on getting energy in your hand to go Rare Candy Magnezone. The thing about this list, it doesn't play the uh, Meraden EX with the Lightning Magnemite, which I, I think you probably want to play. It does play an Unknown V, which, obviously, the attack, if you have one prize remaining, you win the game. Um, yeah, no, I think Dialga V-Star is still worth testing out in the new format, because it does a lot of damage, right? And Dialga V-Star is still a very strong card. Um, in my opinion. It does lose Metal Saucer. We got another Zorak deck. This build optimizes Magma Basin and Gape Drop Bog using Moltres and Radiant Charizard. I like it. Uh, gives you a little bit more of an attacking presence. You're not just trying to go all in on the Zoark, which I respect. Not sure how good this is, but I definitely respect the idea. I mean, Radiant Charizard is still a very strong card, right? So, And then, of course, we got the Control deck. The one deck y'all have been waiting to see is how does Control adapt to the rotation? Because Control does lose a lot of good cards. I mean, it loses, you know, the Wash Energy, Ice Q Engine. It loses... A ton of cards, to be honest. It loses Snorlax, Gormandize, Scoop of Net is kind of a big loss too when you're trying to like take stuff off the board. But let's take a look at how this control deck works. So the first thing you'll notice is the amount of control combos it plays. You got Miltank, you got Mewtwo V Union, and you have a a Duraludon V Max, and you have Eternatus. So that's pretty good. Now you might be looking at Manaphy. Now let me see if I can let me see if I can zoom in here real quick. So, if you don't know what this Manaphy does, basically, I think it, for, like, one energy, you take Pokemon from your opponent's hand and put them on the bench. So, basically, you force Poke... It's basically, you force Pokemon on your opponent's bench from their hand. Pretty sure that's what that does. And that's a pretty nasty attack. Um, but, yeah, the thing you'll notice here is kind of how it's... It's kind of like a New Age control. Like, you got the Rodom Vs, which it does the same thing as Zacian, basically, right? You know how control decks in the past used to play Zacian V to to draw three cards? Rodom does the exact same thing as Zacian. Um, and you also get to play the V-Star. So you get a V-Star power in your deck. As you see, it does play one four seal stone, but you also get access to Rodom V-Star, which you can, you know, dump cards from your hand and then draw cards. So you kind of have, like, a bit of a draw engine there. Um, which is really, really cool. I really like the idea of Rodom V-Star in this deck. And, of course, you do play that Duraludon E-Turn combo. So if you play against a deck that has no out to Duraludon, you literally just go E-Turn a Duraludon into play, and you you don't win the game, but you force your opponent in a weird spot. Like against Lugia, for example, you can, like, open up with, like, Snorlax, and you just go, like, Ultra Ball for Raiden E-Turn, grab Raiden Eternatus, put on your bench, and then it guarantee a Duraludon and play for free. And you just kind of, like, you might just win the game at that point. So that's really cool. So you kind of have, like, an easy time into Lugia. The Mewtwo V Union is still really good, I guess, against Lost Box. The problem with Mewtwo is that there is no scoop up net anymore. The fact that there's no net does make Mewtwo a lot worse because you do want to make sure you're, mute, you're, you're taking stuff off the board. Without the net anymore, it is a little bit tough. Um, but you could try to slow down Lost Box with Klefki and Snorlax. As you see, the deck does play three copies of Snorlax. The idea behind Snorlax is that it has... Um, an ability where your opponent's active can't retreat if it's in the active. So against, like, Lost Box, you have the Snorlax in the active, and since Lost Box has to play Switch Card and Rope and Beach Court, you basically shut off the ability for them to use the Beach Court, which is good. There is a big problem, though, with Snorlax, in my opinion, is that actually there's a brand new special energy that just got released, which we'll talk about in another video, that I kind of makes Snorlax a bit worse against Lost Box, which is kind of sad. Um, some other things you might notice in the deck, um, it does play the Pidgeot, so you do have that infinite loop of Pidgeot. You can also use Pidgeot with Forest Seal Stone, um, you know, Pidgeot's ability puts it back in the deck, you shuffle it from your bench into your deck, so against any deck that literally can't attack, like, if you're playing against Lugia, and you just have a Drought on and play, and they, they can't attack you, you just literally, like, you deck them out by just looping a Pidgeot over and over again, which is the idea. It does have Silene, so you have infinite resources with the Palpad, Silene, Yells, Cheer. Um, you have Sydney, you have Misfortune Sisters. Misfortune Sisters is probably how you try to beat Lost Box, because you can, uh, you can mill the switching cards and Mirage Gates out of the deck with Misfortune Sisters, which is really cool. Yeah, really like this new age of control. I'm sure Sander really likes to kind of see this, this be the, the new control deck. Um, I don't know if this would be hard to play. It seems a little bit more linear, because, again, you're basically just trying to get Mewtwo V Union into play while you kind of, like, have other win conditions, like Miltank, Snorlax, and Duraludon. 
Um, the deck does play Horn, Snorlax, though. Not only is Snorlax helpful against Lost Box, you can also win a game if your opponent's, you know, benching Pokemon that can't do anything. Like, if they have a Luminion in play and it can't attack, you just, like, literally go boss Snorlax and trap it. Like, there's a lot of different win cons, I, you know, this deck kind of opens the doors for. So, definitely a really cool, uh, really cool control deck. Um, it is basically Mewtwo control. Um, but it just has, like, extra options. Like, again, the Snorlax, Miltank, Duraludon, Wind Conditions, really, really cool. So if you're playing against Lugia, if you know you're playing against Lugia, you just go Raid Knee Turn for Duraludon. Again, the only downside of this deck is it does lose Scoop Up Net, so it's a little bit harder to make your Mewtwo stay in play and, like, not, like, have extra Pokemon on your bench that you can just get, like, roped into and stuff. But still seems like a pretty good deck, and I'm glad that somebody managed to figure out a control deck here for post-rotation. Because um, I know a lot of people might have been asking about uh, control. And this control deck doesn't play like Evil Tall or Spite Ops, which are cards people expected might be good in control. But this this kind of just keeps it very basic and simple. Um, the only downside, it doesn't have a draw engine. Again, there's no Gorman Dies. There's no Cinchino in the deck. You just play a lot of supporters. Acerola, Colrus, Zinnia. Um, I think there's a two research. Peonia's is okay. Yeah, it's basically just a million supporter cards, which is kind of cool. And then we got a uh, Lost Gudra deck. We've kind of already looked at that before. We got another... Zork deck with two Empoleons, no Klefki, just going optimal Empoleon. And then you got the uh, Urshifu Inteleon deck. This deck's actually been getting a lot of legs in Japan. Um, I might end up doing a uh, updated post-rotation tier list video for the record. And we're going to have to update some of the decks on the tier list. Because this Inteleon Urshifu deck has been getting a lot of attention and has actually been doing well. Even though you would think Inteleon gets worse because it loses the Shady Dealing Cheryl combo, it still seems to be a good deck. Um, and I guess the big thing is, without Scoob Knight, you can kind of farm Lost Box by just spamming Inteleon's ability to, like, put 20 damage on all those Pokemon. Well, like, Empoleon kind of just chills there, so that's kind of cool. Um, got another Arc Dura deck. Uh, this one is a little different than the other one. This one does play a Drapion in the deck and also plays a little bit more of a, a bit of a, a tankier build. You do have the, uh, the two Charon's Care and also three Lake Acuity for your Duraludon. So you're giving your Duraludon even more HP. Again, I'm interested to see how Arc Dura can do in the new format. Again, it does lose Hyper Potion, and this list doesn't play Crystal Cave. So I'm not too sold on it, but it seems pretty good. And we got yet another Arc Dura deck. This one, this one, I, I kind of like this. So looking at it, we got a lot more Disruption and Healing. We got Avery's, we got Judge. We do play the Single Strike Mustard this time around. Um, and also it plays the Crystal Cave. It actually plays Path. I'm not too sure about Path. But the Crystal Cave does make a lot of sense. I think Cave and Droughton has to be really good, right? The cool card is actually the Single Strike Scroll of the Scorn. So your Droughton takes, like, you know, 280 damage. You can slap that on for one energy and do, like, 300 damage out of nowhere, which is kind of cool. So I like this build a little bit more. I know, I don't know if I like the path in the deck. I think you can probably just get away with, like, a heavy— Like, I really like the idea of, like, Cave, um, Mustard, Karen, and I think the Scroll of the Scorn is actually really smart, especially without Hyper Potion anymore. Um— so yeah, I do like that build. And then we got another Arc deck. This one is a really unique deck. Arceus, Bayonet. Um, literally just Arceus and Bayonet. There's no other Pokemon in the deck. No Guardi, no Drapion. I guess the idea here is you try to loop Charon's Care with Bayonet, which is a really, really creative combo. And see, I like I like, I like, like when Japan comes up with these cool concepts. I wonder if this would actually be playable right now. I might actually, you know, future video idea. Um, no, I really like this idea. Instead of playing Gallade or anything, you just Bayonet. Bayonet has basically via Seekers an ability. You put Bayonet in the Lost Zone, and then you are allowed to get a supporter out of your discard pile back in your hand. So you can just kind of loop Charon's Care over and over. Really, really cool concept. Um, you got another Zorak deck with Empoleon. Uh, we got another Urshi Empoleon deck. Once again, Empoleon's just really good against Lost Box because you just they can't do Comfy's ability against it, uh, which is really, really good. Um, no Inteleon in that build. And then we got another Oinkloin deck here. Once again, just trying to be a very tanky Pokemon with V-Guard and... Uh, Charon's Care and Cheryl and Heavy Healing. Um, and then, of course, we have a Leafeon Spite Ops deck, which I know a lot of people are really excited to see. Um, I don't know how good Leafeon Spite Ops will be. The problem with Leafeon is it trade doesn't it doesn't really trade very well against a lot of big decks, um, but it might be okay. I mean, Leafeon's Grass Knot can do a lot of damage thanks to Spite Ops. You have, like, three or four Spite Ops in play. I mean, okay, you're maybe not going to get four. Maybe realistically, like, three or two. You're probably still going to be doing a lot of damage with Grass Knot, even without Gallarmine. You have that Leafeon V-Star in the deck as a backup attacker, and you have Greening Cells as an ability to accelerate energy. So definitely doesn't seem terrible. I'm not too sold on Leafeon V-Star Spite Ops, but I do like the idea, and I think that it is really nice to see someone trying that out. And we got a really cool Firebox deck here. They actually won a gym battle, apparently, with the new Armor Rogue, allowing you to often he's like move Fire Energy, Fire and Bench here active. This list is interesting. It does play a Lie part in the deck as a draw engine, um, and playing Blissey here. Blissey um, basically allows you, does 150 and then moves all the energy on it uh, to 
one of your bench Pokemon or something, which is kind of interesting. Uh, it's an interesting idea. It does play the Snorlax, has Radiant Charizard as like a big late game attacker. Not too sold on this deck. It does actually use Zork to try to cheat the uh, stage one into play, which is kind of neat. So you don't have to worry too much about using Rare Candy. You just use Zork to go into the stage one evolution into Armor Rogue, and then the next turn you evolve into Armor Rogue. So I don't know. It's an interesting idea. Um, they won a gym battle, apparently. And then the most interesting list here is actually the Lilligan deck here. See, Lilligan never really got to pop off, but this build kind of makes it a little bit more of a tankier build. You got two V-Guard energy. Um, you got Cricket Tune, so immediately you get, like, what, plus, like, 7 HP against Vs. Um, and then, you, of course, you have the new Pokemon that allows you to, uh, when you evolve it, you heal all damage from your Pokemon. So I think if you evolve it, you can heal all the damage on the Lilligan. So you're basically just... Attacking every turn, Lilligan doing what? 230 damage. You're being very bulky, and then you're going into this Pokemon here that allows you to heal it. Um, so you're just kind of doing a bit of tanking and healing here. Lilligan's uh, engine isn't terrible. It does play Gardenia and its V Star Power. So you can just go V Star Power for the energy, and then you Gardenia to build up your Lilligan, which is really, really cool. So definitely an interesting deck. It is cool to see something Lilligan see play. Like a deck like this wouldn't work right now because the format's too fast. Like Lugia just kind of just, you, you can't play these cool ideas because Lugia is just too friggin good but because Lugia loses a lot of power this deck probably has a better time in a Lugia because it doesn't have evil tall or you know it doesn't have that powerful energy Lugia turn to 300 damage out of nowhere uh wombo combo so that is one of the cool things here about this Lillian deck. But it was a really cool uh, list to see. We saw a lot of defensive bulky builds with the Oink Lauren. All the Arceus decks are really fascinating. Um, I think the big one a lot of y'all are excited, though, is the control deck here. But let me know what you thought of the control deck here in the post-rotation format. I know a lot of people are really hyping up control and want to see how it'll do in the post row format. And I think we've maybe got to look at how control might end up being played because control is still really good. Again, control can be very difficult to beat. And uh, it can be difficult to play, but also difficult to beat as long as the right list is created. And this might be the future of Control going forward is this Mewtwo, Duraludon, Klefki, Snorlax uh, deck here using all these different Pokemon in one deck. Definitely seems like a really interesting night on concept. And we'll have to see if Control can adapt in the post-rotation format um, going forward. But that'll be it for me on the video. If y'all enjoyed today's video here, leave a like on the video. Let me know what you're thinking about the post-rotation content. I know I've been posting a lot of post-rotation content, but... To be honest, there's nothing else really to talk about um, other than, like, you know, the, the meta prediction videos. There's not as much content as I like to do. I haven't done a tier list in a while. It might be time to do a tier list soon, folks. So definitely keep your eye out for maybe another tier list soon. Um, but that'll be it. If you haven't subbed to this channel, make sure to subscribe. I think we're actually very close to 3K uh, subscribers. So if you haven't subbed yet, click that subscribe button. It'd be greatly appreciated. That'll be for me. Catch you on another video. And uh, see ya.